Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to lecture 67. Uh, uh, in the previous lecture, we just finished the uh, satellite movement and about an oblate spheroid, and then we looked into how the sun synchronous orbit can be uh, generated. Okay. Now, uh, we look the perturbation on the satellite due to the third body. So, here in this case, we can do a general treatment for this particular topic, but it is a very long and this lecture is going to be the last lecture on the general or orbit perturbation theory. So, in very brief, I will discuss about the movement of moon around the earth and getting perturbed by the sun. So, this is the topic and I will discuss it briefly, so that uh, uh, today we finish this particular topic and then we get into the orbit determination problem. Say the earth is located here. So, this is your earth and moon is here and the sun is located here. This angle we write as phi. This angle we will indicate by psi prime and this angle we will indicate by psi. Okay. So, this is not necessarily y. Uh, what I have shown here, this is just the psi and psi prime, it is a longitude, longitude of the moon and sun. So, under what assumption we are trying to work with, moon is in ecliptic orbit that means the if this is sun and around the sun the earth is moving so this plane we have called as the ecliptic plane and earlier i have shown that uh, so if this is earth and earth equator is and if this is the ecliptic plane so here the earth is there and this is the ecliptic plane which is shown here So, equator of the earth will be inclined like this at 23 and half degree and moon's orbit it is around 5 degree inclined with the plane of ecliptic. So, moon's orbit will be somewhere say uh, at 5 degree like this. So, with the plane of ecliptic, moon's uh, inclination is not much. So, if we simplify the problem, so in that case, we can indicate that their lo longitude, it is a psi and psi dot. The, uh, in a general problem, say if, uh, in the case of if this is the satellite, this is capital omega and we know this angle is u which is omega plus theta. So, capital omega plus u this is written as the longitude l, but if this angle of inclination is large then it is not valid because capital omega is in a different plane and u is in a different plane. So, it is not valid, but if the angle is a small i is a small. So, for a small i we can write longitude equal to capital omega plus u. So, we assume that moon is in the ecliptic orbit and then we also assume earth is in circular orbit. So, earth is in circular orbit. So, this implies that the if looked from the earth, 
sun will appear to move in a circular orbit. Okay. So, this implies sun will appear to move around earth in circular orbit. And the third assumption we make moon acts like like a point mass. See here uh, the sun is far away from the earth. Okay. Uh, if this is earth and sun is at a large distance, but is still the oblate shape of the earth. Causes a precision motion of the axis of spin. As we know in the right in the beginning of uh, this course, uh, I have discussed this part that the earth axis, it uh, moves in a circle. Okay. So, this is the spin axis of the earth. So, it will move in a circle and route, right now it is a pointing toward the polaris, what we call as the pole star. In Hindi, we call it the dhruptara. Okay. So, right now the spin axis is a pointing toward the pole star, but it will not be so all the time. Another 5000 years, this pole star, the dhruptara will no longer be the um, polaris for the earth. And in, a, in a around 25,800 uh, years or uh, nearly 26,000 years, this uh, earth spin axis goes once in the moves in a circle. Okay. So, this motion we call as the precision motion and beside this we have also the nutation motion of the spin axis of the earth. This is called the nutation motion. So, it keeps bubbling, okay. it will keep bubbling here, here it will keep, it will rotate like this and also it will keep bubbling about this. Okay. So, this is called the nutation motion. So, this happens because of this sun and it can be uh, computed also. So, if you look one problem you, you will find in, uh, if you have done mechanics course, uh, then you will see in the Weir Johnston book on the mechanics that there is a problem related to the earth the inertia of the earth is given. So, this problem is related to the satellite attitude dynamics. So, then you have to find the period of uh, what will the period of precision given the moment of inertia of the earth and uh, distance of the sun and all these things are available. So, based on that the uh, year uh, uh, in how many years it will complete one precision. So, that has to be computed the period of precision. So, that turns out to be around 26,000 years, 25,800 nearly. So, here we then uh, define psi equal to capital omega plus a small omega plus theta and psi prime equal to capital omega prime, small omega prime, theta prime. This is for the moon, longitude of moon and this is for sun. And already we have looked into that R, the perturbation term due to the third body is given by g m prime by r prime and uh, this part we have uh, okay this part we have not done okay but still we do not have much time to uh, carry out this work but what we do here that uh, if we do the whole analysis, it will take little time.
okay i will supply that those materials to you so basically the perturbation due to the third body it can be written as r by r prime to the power n pn cos phi minus r by r prime cos phi and from where it's coming so i will supply you uh, the lecture rec- the corresponding lecture for that see if, uh, exactly what we have done if we go back and look here in this place so the moon is moving around the earth and this is getting perturbed by the sun so what will be the perturbation force acting on the moon for this we have already done in the three body problem we have written that particular equation okay so that particular equation can be utilized and the equation can be written so rather than uh, discussing all those things uh, because we don't have much time so we just concentrate on this so given that this equation is uh, the uh, perturbation potential can be expressed here in this format which of course i will supply you the respective material okay we can expand this and write this as gm prime divided by r prime and here this is your legend polynomial as we have worked earlier for the oblate sphere void and this is summation 0 to infinity n equal to 0 to infinity and here this is minus this is a separate term so once we use this and expand it so the first term you can see immediately pn p0 cos phi this term is equal to 1 so therefore this gets reduced to 1 n equal to 0 this will be this part also be equal to 1 so this way we can expand it and we can write this as r by r prime and cos phi p1 cos phi r by r prime square p2 cos phi and plus so on minus r by r prime cos phi so p1 cos phi this is equal to cos phi and if we utilize this value so this term and this term will drop out and then we are left with gm prime divided by r prime 1 plus r by r prime square p2 cos phi see here we are taking them as the point mass we are taking them as the point mass and therefore the perturbation due to the oblate shaped and other things they are not coming into picture this is just because of the third body perturbation again i am reminding this is the third body perturbation and from where we have got this equation this i will supply later on while the course runs okay and so on all the terms can be written this we can write as r by a square times a by r prime square times p2 cos phi and plus like this and p2 cos phi this term in the legend polynomial this is equal to 1 by 4 plus 3 by 4 cos phi and therefore r gets reduced to minus gm prime by r prime and see here once we are writing here in this format so i have done nothing wrong here in that 
A we have taken in the numerator denominator and separated out in these two terms. cos 2 phi, this is cos 2 phi. R by R prime we have changed, so R by A. And plus higher order terms. A general treatment of this whatever we are doing, it is a part of a general treatment. So, actually I wanted to cover that general treatment, but already we have exceeded large number of lectures. So, I am skipping that part and all those things I am going to supply separately as supplementary material. And this is a small portion I am just dealing with. Now, some of the results we are going to use here, which you will find in those supplementary materials provided. So, using those results, it can be written as 1 by 1 plus 4 A by now R prime. R prime will be equal to A prime. Here R prime this is the this is a standing for sun and if we are assuming the sun to be in circular orbit okay, then this will be equal to A prime. So, this R prime we can replace in terms of A prime and we can write as A prime A square okay. and then the other part remains R by A A square these are the minor manipulation which are done 3 by 4 a by a prime a square r by a square times cos 2 pi. So, we neglect the higher order terms. So, we terminate the higher order terms and simply write it as neglecting higher order terms. Now, 1 by 4 a by a prime square r by a can be expanded all these materials you will find there and written in here in this format cos m. Uh, actually, this can be taken also as the exercise problems 1 plus 3 by 2 e a square minus 2 e m cos m minus 1 by 2 e a square cos 2 m. a square times cos 2 phi this we can write as So, R by A already we have expanded. So, this we delete here and uh, cos 2 phi we have to expand. So, phi we are writing as phi we have written somewhere. No, phi we have not still defined. Uh, phi we have here, phi is here this is the angle between phi equal to psi minus psi prime this angle we have defined. So, using this phi we can expand it. So, this phi is psi minus psi prime and psi is how much this is capital omega plus u. 
or capital omega u if we expand. So, this will be capital omega plus omega plus theta minus psi prime. Okay. So, this way we can write this cos 2 phi as so cos 2 phi. So, this implies cos 2 phi will be equal to cos 2 theta plus 2 capital omega plus a small omega minus psi prime. We write it this way and then expand this term here. So, this will be cos 2 theta times cos 2 capital omega plus a small omega minus psi prime minus sin 2 theta sin 2 capital omega small omega minus psi prime. Okay, so, this expansion we retain this r by a here because for this extension we do not have a space to write here. So, let us retain it here r by a square. So, only uh, the cos 2 phi term we have expanded here in this place and this the r by a term we are retaining it here. Okay, r by a cos theta. So, r by a relationship we are aware from our earlier derivation. So, this quantity will be equal to cos m plus 1 by 2. These are some of the expansions quite frequently used in celestial mechanics. You can use book by J. M. A. Danby on celestial mechanics, also by Smart and White. Uh, this book name is okay. Another book name uh, I will give you shortly in the maybe in the next class. And uh, obviously, Archie Roy, Archie E. Roy, this is on the fundamentals of astrodynamics. All these materials I will provide the soft copy, handwritten soft copy. So, these are the expressions and this we need to utilize in the this particular part. So, we can expand sin 2 theta and cos 2 theta here and replace this. And where theta is the true anomaly of the moon. Okay. So, if we do this, so r can be written as minus g m prime divided by a prime q a square 1 by 4 plus 3 by 8 a square. So, we need to insert all these values here in this and then expand. So, this can be written in this format and reorganized. Plus 15 by 8 cos 2 times capital omega small omega minus psi prime. Remember, this is an approximate analysis 
plus m This way we can expand it and reorganize to write here in this format. So, the first term here this is a constant term So, this term gives rise to the circular perturbation, this is referring to circular perturbation. So, let us say that we write R 1 equal to minus G m prime divided by A prime q 1 by 4 plus 3 by 8 divided by 2 by 3 E square. and look into the corresponding how the periapsis is getting affected because of this. So, omega dot it can be written as 1 minus E a square under root. This is from our Langrange planetary equation dou r by dou e plus cot i divided by n a square 1 minus E a square dou r by dou i. So, only we look into the effect of this particular term which is arising from this term multiplied by this particular term here. Okay. So, immediately we can see that because of this term this will be equal to 0 this particular part this multiplied by dou r by dou i. So, this quantity is 0 because i is nowhere present here. So, we are left with just estimating n a square e dou r by dou e. So, we have to estimate this quantity. So, here we have uh, replaced this by r 1. So, let us write here this as the r 1. Okay. We will write this as the r 1 because we are just looking effect of this term. We are not looking the effect of all the terms. We are separately looking the effect of different terms. So, this term will give rise to the secular perturbation means it is a time dependent. Okay, secular means time dependent. So, dou r 1 by dou e this quantity from here we get as minus g m prime by a prime q a square 3 by 8 times 2 e and this quantity this is nothing but mu prime by a prime q which is n prime a square. So, n prime a square a, a square and this becomes 3 by 4 with minus sign e. So, dou r 1 by dou e is this quantity where g m prime we are replacing by mu prime. So, mu prime by a prime q this equal to n prime a square. and uh, of course, 1 minus e square then we have to evalu evaluate this term. So, once we insert this, so we get minus minus sign gets plus. So, this gets 3 by 4 n prime a square a square e 1 minus e a square under root divided by n a square e. This 
then this term this term this drops out a square a square term drops out and we are left with 3 by 4 n prime square divided by n times 1 minus a square under root. So, omega dot is 3 by 4 n prime square divided by n times 1 minus c square. So, this gives you the rate at which the periapsis of the moon will move because of this term only, okay, not all the terms. So, if you try to match the result with the moon's perigee movement with rising because of this term, you will not be able to do because the moon perigee movement it will involve all the terms effect of all the terms, while here this is giving just because of this term which we call as the secular term, which is a constant term appearing here. Now, if we integrate it, so you will see that the t will manifest here in this place. Okay. So, but direct integration we do not do, we uh, some of the terms where uh, say if the psi dot it is involved. So, there we do not do the direct integration. In this case, we can do and write this as omega equal to omega 0 plus 3 by 4 n prime square divided by n 1 minus c square t. So, the, this is showing that this is changing with as the t is changing and therefore, we call this as the secular perturbation. Okay. Similarly, the perturbation in the sigma we can work out 1 minus c a square n a square e times dou r by dou e plus 2 in a dou r by dou a. So, this is a Langdon's planetary equation and we replace this by bo 1 and look back into the equation. So, dou r 1 by dou e already we have calculated dou r 1 by dou e minus 3 by 4 n prime square minus 3 by 4 n prime square a square e. and dou r 1 by dou a we have to compute. So, r 1 is given here. So, this quantity will be uh, g m prime. So, g m prime already we are writing as this quantity we are writing as n prime square. So, n prime square 2 a then once we differentiate with respect to a. So, this will give us 2 a. So, this gives us n prime square times 2 a and then multiplied by rest of the quantity in the bracket and then insert these two results into this equation okay. and that gives you d sigma by d t. If you work it out the whole thing this will result in minus n prime square I am skipping some of the steps 7 by 4 plus 3 by 4 e square. So, the, this is also you can see that this is just dependent on t and uh, this will be a factor of uh, this is also a secular term. So, this way the uh, these terms uh, are giving rise to the uh, secular perturbation. Okay. So, a particular the celestial body movement um, it is a combination of the so we, now you take the various terms all the terms are uh, available in that as we go back and look into this. So, uh, though we have neglected many of the terms, but some of the terms which are visible here here you can look into this particular part. So, all these terms are there. Okay. So, if we work for them uh, we will get perturbation due to various terms. But out of that some are periodic, some will be the long periodic, some short periodic, secular terms and so on. So, the effect of them all can be combined and looked into the motion of the moon. 
So, we stop here and uh, I will supply you all the related materials because uh, we require further at least some uh, 7 8 hours to complete this part related to third body perturbation which we do not have. So, we stop here and I will supply the rest of the material in supplementary format. So, thank you very much.